Hello everyone, for today's video is all about the reproductive cyclicity. For the luteal phase there are three major processes. First is luteinization or the transformation of follicular cells into luteal, cells after ovulation. Second the growth and development of the corpus luteum accompanied by increasing quantities of progesterone and three luteolysis or destruction of the corpus luteum. The luteal phase lasts from the time of ovulation until regression luteolysis of the corpus luteum near the end of the estrus cycle. It includes metastasis and destrus. The dominant ovarian hormone during the luteal phase is progesterone. The luteal phase consists of corpora lutea formation or luteinization, production of progesterone, and luteolysis. Vascular breakage results in a structure with a blood clot-like appearance. This structure is called corpus hemorrhagicum. Corpora hemorrhagica can be observed from the time of ovulation until about day 1 to 3 of the estrus cycle. Luteolysis causes an irreversible structural degradation of the corpus, luteum. After ovulation, the theca interna and the granulosal cells of the follicle undergo a dramatic transformation known as luteinization. Luteinization is a process whereby cells of the ovulatory follicle are transformed into local tissue. This transformation is governed by LH. The left photo in the right screen is the preovulatory follicle that consists of granulosal cells that line the antrum. The basement membrane separating the granulosal cells from the cells of the theca interna. The right photo of the screen is the corpus hemorrhagicum. In this period, many small blood cells rupture crossing local hemorrhage. This hemorrhage appears as a blood clot on the surface of the ovary that sometimes penetrates into the center of follicle after ovulation. The last picture from the right bottom of the screen is the corpus luteum, which is now mixture of large luteal cells, LLC formerly granulosal cells, and many small luteal cells, SLC formerly fecal cells. In 1A, the circle area is a corpus hemorrhagic. Notice the bloody appearance at the apex. In 1b, the corpus hemorrhagicum has been sliced in half. Notice the remnant of the follicular lumen that is filled with a blood clot in the arrow. Notice the picture in late metastris in 2a. The area designated by the arrow is the developing corpus luteum. While in 2b, the corpus luteum seen in 2a has been sliced in half. The arrow indicates a follicle that was sliced. In 3A, a corpus luteum circle at peak progesterone production. 3B, a large mass of orange tissue can be seen when the CL sliced in half. The orange color reflects the high of beta heratine. The central cavity arrow is a remnant of the follicular antrum. A central cavity does not exist in every CL. In 4A, the circle indicates the approximate area of the regressing corpus luteum. While in 4B, the corpus luteum has changed in color and in size. The secretory component of the tissue has decreased significantly as a result of luteolysis. Arrow designates regressing CL from a previous cycle. In early to late metastris, the developing corpora lutea between days 3 and 6. Because variation in length of the cycle and the time of ovulation relative to the stage of the cycle, precise age of these corpora lutea is difficult established. Notice that all structures still have hemorrhagic appearance, and some have visible stigma arrow indicating the point at which ovulation occurred. In Deistress, numbers designate six corpora lutea during high secretory activity. Corpora lutea 4, 5, and 6 have been sliced in half. Notice that corpus luteum 5 has anthrum. Also, notice that P4 is much higher in the sow than in the cow, you and mare. For the prostrus, it shows the regressing corpora lutea. Notice the pale color. The interval from luteolysis estrus is longer than other species. For the early metastrus, 1A is the corpus hemorrhagic is within the circle. 
It is not highly visible from the exterior, as in other species. While in 1b, arrow indicates the hemorrhagic tissue within the wall of the newly ovulated follicle that has been sliced in half. For the late metastress, 2a is the area designated by the arrow, is the developum corpus luteum. While in 2b, the corpus luteum seen in 2a has been sliced in half. The arrow indicates a follicle that was sliced. In prostris, two examples of regressing corpora lutea. Specimens were sliced in half. Notice that the size has decreased. Arrow in 4b indicates a residual blood clot within the corpus luteum. Distra structures are sliced in half to expose the inner tissue mass of the corpus luteum. Two distinct types of corpora lutea can be seen during the peak with luteal phase. In some, there is a homogeneous mass of tissue without central cavity 3a, while in others a central arrow cavity exists 3b. Large luteal cells LLC are round, plump cells with a large spherical nucleus. These cells are derived from granulosal cells. Small luteal cells SLC, derived from the theca interna, are stellate in shape. The cytoplasm of small luteal cells is darker than in the large cells. Note the capillary C and B. Progesterone secreted by both cell types has ready access to the blood. P4 promotes alveolar development in the mammary gland. It also exerts a strong positive influence on the endometrium of the uterus. Under the influence of P4, the uterine glands secrete materials into the uterine lumen. Progesterone inhibits the myometrium and thus reduces its contractility and tone. Progesterone is an inhibitor because it reduces basal GnRH amplitude and frequency, prevents behavioral estrus and stops the preovulatory LH surge and reduces myometrial tone. Progesterone almost totally inhibits estrual behavior. In general, females under the influence of progesterone do not display estrus and will not accept the male for copulation. Lutealysis means disintegration or decomposition of the corpus luteum. It occurs during a one to three day period at the end of the luteal phase. It is a process whereby the corpus luteum undergoes irreversible degeneration characterized by a dramatic drop in blood concentrations of progesterone. A vascular countercurrent diffusion system ensures that PGF2 will reach the ovary in sufficient quantities to cause luteolysis in the ewe, cow and sow. The utero-ovarian vascular countercurrent diffusion system. In the two photographs, a blue latex medium was injected into the utero-ovarian vein UOV and a red latex medium into the ovarian artery OA. We have here the illustration of the countercurrent diffusion system in the cow, sow and you. A portion of uterine PGF2 alpha diffuses directly from the utero ovarian vein into the ovarian artery where it has a direct lytic effect on the corpus luteum. Brown line is an accurate estimate of PGF2A. As the graph shows PGF2A, it's low as our OT receptors base bars. Here is the proposed steps resulting in the loss of progesterone production from steroidogenic cells. The immune system may be involved in structural regression of the corpus, luteum. It is well known that macrophages and lymphocytes are present in the corpus luteum at the time of luteolysis. Macrophages and lymphocytes produce materials known as cytokines. Exogenous administration of progesterone results in manipulation of the estrus and menstrual cycles. Here is the proposed mechanism of luteolysis in primates. Progesterone is the primary hormone in human contraception. The four strategies for its use are oral administration, transdermal administration, injectable administration, and implants. Following the discovery that pgf 2 was the luteolysin, a major research emphasis was placed on using this hormone to shorten the estrus cycle and induce estrus in cattle. Injections of PGF2 between day 7 and day 18 will cause the cow to begin to show estrus in about 3 days. The Ossinch innovation incorporates the mechanisms of follicular dynamics. The basic strategy for the Ossinch program is presented in the steps that you can see in the video.